Kilo was here, Halayana was here, Kapal was here. Uh, when you get on a field like that in 7 on 7, all of a sudden it doesn't feel like there's any division between Open and D1 and D2. How did you feel for today's four games, right? Three. Well, yeah, it was uh, three pool play and then single elimination. Yeah. Do you feel play. like there was some progress, some yeah, incremental yeah. improvement? No, I think with the teams that were here um, in the tournament, you know, all the teams that played for a state championship, as well as uh, Campbell and Kahuku, um, it, you know, competition was great. I think we got five games in today. Um, so those those reps are, are precious, you know. So just try to come, compete, see a different um, level of speed and, and overall talent and leave here. Hopefully we got better. I think we did. So Who took the snaps for you guys? At quarterback? I mean, or yeah. at quarterback, we had Kai Miyasato. Okay. And four games is a lot. I mean, even though it's like, you know, abbreviated, mm -hmm. you know, but it's hot out there. It's probably about 90 plus. Uh, I think I, it was brutal out there. But the reads that he had to make. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, you know, the reps are great. You know, it's, it's past league. There's no pass rush, but, you know, there's still coverage that got to be read. Um, you still got to make the right decision. So, you know, we, we just try to look at it and, and dissect what happened and take the good, um, run from the mistakes, and build off of this throughout the summer and into camp. Who is this bigger for, him or your receivers? Probably both. Probably both. I think. You know, we, we had we gave them off last week, so we knew coming in that it'll take a little while. We have to um, knock off some rust, but for the receivers and him to be on the same page, look at the same coverage structure, and know what we're looking at, where the ball should go, when it should go there, it's, it's huge. So, who do you guys play today? Today we had in our pool. We opened up with St. Louis, Mililani, Lahaina, and then we played the uh, Kapaa, and then we ended up losing to Campbell. Five games. Five games today. Oh, yeah. So. Working. What do you think about Campbell? I mean, I, they, they won the whole thing. See, in the last couple of years, I mean, fast, speed all over the field, athletic, long. What do you think of the quarterback? He's a, he's just going into his sophomore year. Sophomore. Um, this kid is good. He has talent. Um, he can throw. You know, he, he makes the reads. He gets the ball out. Throws a nice deep ball. Um, they challenge you with that speed, with that vertical passing game. They challenge you. So, you know, that game was really good for us as far as uh, going against a team that we knew coming in, they're gonna throw the ball 40 yards. Um, you know, so you game plan for that. You want to try to take away the deep balls and make them earn their, th make them earn their points and drive down the field and sustain the drive. So uh, at the end of the day, I was happy. You know, happy with how the kids came out and competed. Yeah, just compete. Just compete. Just compete. compete. Doesn't matter what your label is. Yeah. Um, so if they had something like this at least once a month, it would be ideal, right? You guys That'd would just be, nice. be like, oh yeah. We'll play everybody the same, you know, uh, St. Louis, we'll play the same way. Um, going to the BIF, Kona moving to D1, mm -hmm. not a surprise, but, you know, there was a possibility for a creative scheduling, like, everybody just play each other twice or once in a certain bracket or pool, and then split off at for states, right? Yeah. Split yeah. off for the playoffs. It didn't work out that way for Kona, mm -hmm. uh, Kona Waino, but it works out for everybody else because the D1's having... Varsity and JV, yeah, it yeah. helps with attendance, enthusiasm, uh, development. You know, uh, having a JV program it, to develop the players, the younger players that might not be ready to play varsity. Yeah. You know, every year I think you have a handful of kids that can come up as ninth graders, but you know, it fluctuates year, year to year. Um, most of the time, you should you should probably stay down and get all the reps instead of coming up and only getting limited reps. Yeah. So I think that was probably a, a major. Um, part of their decision to come up. I mean, you stay yeah. down, you got to get rid of your JV program. Um, that's, that's that's tough. But Co Coach Brad mentioned that he has like so far 40 freshmen coming in. That's nice. So that made him, I think, he, I said, but put a number on that. It's like 50% of your decision. You said about 80. Because if it fit him in like 10, oh, yeah, I yeah, think yeah. they would have said no. We're saying yeah, yeah. that'd be <laughs> tough. No, it's nice, you know, to have a freshman class that big. Um, because last year, as he said, last year was a pretty good size. The year before uh, was pretty low. Mm. Good kids, but pretty low. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, it's kind of tough. You know, we're starting to get our, our freshmen to come out um, and get things going on that end. But, you know, we're not at 40 yet. I hope we get there. Yeah. Well, if you get 25 and you do that every year, that's 100 kids. Yeah, yeah. You in a whole program, 50 50 varsity VJV. You can live with that. I can live with I could live with that. I, right now, we're not even there. Yeah. If we get there, that'll be great. Greatest linebacker in healing history. I say Todd oh, Bello. Yeah, yeah. I say Todd you know, Bello, but I'm biased because I didn't see... It's tough for me because I wasn't... You know, I, I've, I lived on the Big Island 12 years now. 
So I didn't see a lot of those guys play, but I hear the stories, you know. Best linebacker in your, you're getting in trouble if you answer this. You don't have to, but best linebacker since you've seen Hilo. Oh, so well, Tal yeah. talent-wise, I would have to probably go with Ofa. Yeah. Um, you know, he, did, he won the cover two player of the year, the year that we played Kahuku in the uh, States. Yeah, that was like 7-0 in the fourth quarter, if I remember right. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, it's just, you know, this instincts, the size, the instincts, his ability to get to the ball. Yeah. We have, we've, we've had some very good ones. We've, yeah. you know, five, you guys are, five you guys seven, are... 150 pounds is tough, you know. You take the pounding when you play against the big teams, but the total package as far as size, yeah. um, ability, uh, I'd probably have to say Ofa. If there was a Hilo Bulls revival, semi-pro football, he would be the middle linebacker right now. He's probably, probably what, 28, 30 now? He is about 21, maybe. Oh, he's still young? Yeah, well, I yeah, thought this yeah. was like from like 7, 8, 9, 10 this years ago. This was uh, 2000 and oh, okay. Well, he would definitely 16. be the starting middle linebacker then. In a league full of grown men, yeah, he would be that guy. Um, defense has always been you guys' cornerstone, but People just take it for granted Hilo's gonna have the best defense. Should they say that about the upcoming defense or you just kinda just wait and see? The potential is there. I mean, you know, we, we made it to the state championship game last year. We didn't perform and execute how we would like to. We get 10 that come back from that group. You know, oh. Two freshmen, uh, two or three sophomores played the all year. So you hope that the growth in the weight room, the growth in conditioning, the growth in football IQ, you, you, you hope that it shows, you know, going into the sophomore and junior years now. So who are the 10 guys? 10 guys we yeah. have. <laughs> Wait, uh, let me get my clock out. 60 seconds, go. <laughs> at Nose, we have Tyson Kanaipio. Uh, Where is he from? He's from, uh, he lives out in Puna side. Okay. Um, so at the ends, we have uh, Koha Wilson. We have Josh Nero comes back up front. Where are they from? Um, Josh Nero is from Puna side. Koa is from Hilo. Um, at the linebacker spot, we have Lyle Silva. He returns. And he's from where? He's from HPP. What is that? Uh, Hawaii Paradise Park. Oh, we out there? Uh, we have Mana Price comes back. Outside at corner, we have Elijah Powell comes back. Dylan um, Balga comes back. The safety we have is from Kaelin White returns. And Kapana uh, Kanaikane returns for us. So on paper, this could Maybe this year, maybe next year, be like a top one or two defense. Can be a good defense from your, you know, during your era. It, it, it can be. This season can be a good defense. You know, um, I was happy with how they played today, particularly against Campbell. You know, and what was the score? I don't even know the score. It ended up being 2018. Wow. Wow. You know? So. I mean, the potential is there, you know, we talk about it with them all the time, the potential is potential. We need to make sure that we work so we can um, meet all of our goals that we want to, that we set and we want to establish for ourselves. So I think June and July, we'll, we'll, we'll see how we build upon this, how we look coming out of camp. Um, and then after that, you got to stay healthy, you got to stay eligible. So this, this kind of ends like the spring ball workouts or you guys go three no, days a week? We, we'll, we'll carry with the seven on seven thing a little longer um, for the remainder of June. And when we get to July, we'll structure it and organize it more as if, okay, now we're going to ramp it up as if we're going have, to we're have normal practices and get ready for camp. Is there going to be like a one or two week, just no football, no weight room? Last week. <laughs> we gave them off last week. There you go. So there you go. From here on out, we gotta we gotta go put the work in. So this is crazy because uh, VIF now could have at least two state level. Because Kona Wine I think translates pretty good to D1. Yeah, yeah, they do. But what they're missing is enough size defensively. Whereas you guys have both sides and special teams. So, uh, but that'll be, that'll be this will be getting crazy because uh, I think Kona is a better fit in D2 statewide. Because of Lahaina Luna, Kapa'a, those guys. But this is how it is. They're, they're going to be D1. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's tough. They can compete, you know, and they got to, each program got to make the decision that it fits best for them. Yeah. But when the decision is to drop your JV and whatnot, that's, that's a hard decision to make. So I think they made the right choice. You know what's happy? Come here, man, big guy. Hey. They're the top dogs now in D2. Yeah, HPA is still there. And then you HPA got will the, be you got tough. The eight man teams coming up. So. We'll what see. Do you think, I mean, what I'll, do you think about the eight man? I mean, Kohala 
doesn't want to really be an 11 man but they're trying they got like 18 20 kids coming out which is good well, for them i hope that they they have the numbers you know i hope that they have the numbers they can stay healthy and stay eligible it would be a shame to see um games get forfeited you know yeah. it's, it's, so we'll see we'll see how it goes you know as the decision was made and you gotta just just go through with it at this point so for who pay the push to go they've got pretty decent numbers and Kau wanted to, from what I heard, Kau wanted to play St. Louis last year. They were, they were like looking into it. Interesting. <laughs> That's a monster. We did it. Um, <laughs> yeah, good luck. <laughs> All right. Thanks, coach. Thank you. Appreciate it. So, Mr. Boss.